This week I saw an advertisement for a couple days of healing services in our area. An international speaker is coming to the UP to hold meetings in which he advertises, come and be healed in the name of Jesus. Many people and a lot of very famous television preachers claim that God heals the sick through the work of a particular specially gifted individual. I am Dave Chambers, pastor of Manistique Bible Church. And the question of miraculous healing and miracle working healers is a controversial one. Millions of people around the world flock to those who claim to have the power to heal the sick. Many who suffer from severe diseases desire healing. Does God heal today through specially gifted people who can miraculously heal the sick? Now I am answering a specific question. The question is not, does God heal? But does God give instantaneous healing through people specially gifted to heal? Are those who travel the world claiming to heal the sick actually gifted by God? The Bible does record that God has used miracle workers in the past to heal the sick. Jesus, Peter, and Paul are the most frequently mentioned healers in the Bible. The prophets Elijah and Elisha each healed a few people, but those are the only two men that are mentioned in the Old Testament as healing. On the other hand, the Gospels are filled with accounts of Jesus' healing. The book of Acts describes the miracles of Peter, John, and Paul. And Peter and Paul specifically are recorded in Acts as healing numerous people, including through some incredibly unique methods. On at least one occasion, when Peter's shadow fell on sick people in the street, they were immediately healed. On another occasion, when pieces of cloth that Paul had worn were sent to the sick, they were immediately healed. And so God has healed in the past, and he has healed miraculously. But does he do so today? To answer this question, we need to examine the biblical records of healing. For the majority of, the, of biblical history, miraculous healing did not happen. The times in which there were miracles of healing were very short, and they lasted no more than two generations. And only two periods of time can be found in the entire 4,000 years of recorded biblical history in which God used miracle workers to heal. If God is healing through miracle workers today, then this is a unique thing, one of only three eras in the entire history of the world in which God used specially gifted people to heal. To answer this question, we also need to recognize that the periods of healing served a specific purpose. Consider the New Testament miracles. In Acts 2.22, Peter says the miracles of Jesus were the divine testimony that Jesus is the Messiah. For example, Mark 2 tells of the time Jesus told a man his sins were forgiven. This outraged the Pharisees who declared, no one can forgive sin but God. Then Jesus said to them, so you will know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. And then he turns to the paralyzed man and he says, I say unto thee, arise and take up thy bed and go thy way into thine house. So the healing of this lame man was proof that Jesus is God who forgives sin. In Hebrews 2, the Bible says the miraculous works of the apostles were the divine testimony that the gospel message they preached was truly from God. Miracles always served a purpose. In the New Testament, they were authenticating signs from God, testifying to the truth of the claims of and about Jesus. They or evidence that Jesus and the Apostles were speaking the truth. Do the miracles of today serve that purpose? Are the deeds of these miracle workers revealing the truths of Jesus and supporting the Gospel? Hardly. The claims of Jesus were authenticated 2,000 years ago. We do not need to have an ongoing authentication. And the works of these miracle workers, they do not authenticate. Instead, they cast doubt. Time and time again, the miracles that have been claimed to have been performed by these preachers have been shown to be false. Their miracles have been examined and found to exist only in the claims of these men. On top of that, the message they preach is not the gospel message. They are preaching a message of a Jesus who died to satisfy our physical desires 
According to them, Jesus' death secures to us riches and health if we just have enough faith. That is not the truth. And that is not the gospel. Jesus died to save men from sin, not from sickness. And the supposed miracles of these preachers confirm nothing. Should we even expect miraculous healings today? The Bible never says that God has promised that all Christians would be healed of their diseases. In fact, by the time the book of Acts ends, there are no more records of miraculous healings. Instead, the Bible tells of faithful Christians who labored alongside the apostles, suffered illness, and were not miraculously healed. One man, Epaphroditus, was with Paul, and he nearly died of his illness. He was healed, but not through Paul's ministry, but through the prayers of the church. Another man, Timothy, was one of Paul's closest companions. Timothy had some sort of stomach trouble, and Paul gave Timothy instructions. He did not tell Timothy that Paul would come to Ephesus and have a healing service for him. Paul gave Timothy medical advice to help ease his ongoing stomach complaint. Another of Paul's companions was so sick that he could not travel with Paul. So what did the apostle do? Did he lay hands on him and heal him? No, Paul says, Trophimus, I left at Miletus sick. He left him behind. Either Paul was a heartless monster, or neither he nor Trophimus expected God to miraculously heal all their illnesses. We know that Paul himself was troubled by a great physical affliction, but he was never healed. If these men of God were not healed, and they showed no signs that they expected God to heal them, then what in the world would cause anyone who cares at all about what the Bible says, what would cause them to expect to be miraculously healed? It's not in scriptures. In short, these healers are frauds. Absolutely no credible evidence exists that any one of their supposed miracles occurred. They are blights on Christianity, making a mockery of the Word of God and bringing shame on the name of Jesus. They are not messengers of God and they are not proclaiming the truths of God's Word. They are preaching lies appealing to the desires of the flesh and making promises they cannot fulfill. Instead of preaching healing from physical diseases, the true preacher of God's word will preach healing from sin. Because God never promised healing from all our sin. Not in this life. And 2 Peter 2 describes these kinds of teachers as ones who have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, who love the wages of unrighteousness, these are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great th swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh. They're not men of God. They're not miracle workers. They are liars. Now, does God heal? Absolutely, God does heal. But that's a question for another day. But in the meantime... We need to remember that physical health is a great blessing, but there are things that are more important. One author said, physical health, while most desirable, is not the greatest, most heavenly good in this world, but spiritual health is. What is needed today is the old gospel, with all its hopefulness and yet unflinching sternness, that can alone suffice for all the experiences of life, ill health, and death. It is only the gospel that helps us understand and gives us courage to face the realities of life, the realities of sickness, and even the realities of death. It is not the promise of a quick healing. It is the promise of salvation. If you are in the Manistic area and you are thinking about going to these meetings, I, I encourage you, do not go. You'll find nothing there but a false teacher peddling his lies. You may be suffering from a great illness. You may be in, in pain and in trouble. But your greatest need is not to have your sickness taken away. Your greatest need is to have your sin taken away. If you've not trusted Christ as your Savior, I invite you to do so. 
if you have had your sin taken away, then you have the promise of God that one day all your sicknesses will be taken away. You have the promise of God that your sickness right now, it is temporary. It is a light affliction that is working in you a glory far greater than your present pain. And so do not look to the promises of a quick deliverance from trouble. Instead, look to God who has promised everlasting life. And if you have more questions, click the Ask a Pastor link at everlastingtruths.com.